Hey, Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. Hey, everyone, Matt and Apple here. Welcome to episode 165 of Snack Minute. Uh, this week, we have our, our multiple-time guest and friend, Abiel, joining us again from Thousand Eyes. Um, Abiel, if you don't mind, for the new Snackers, introducing yourself, and then we'll jump right into what uh, you want to show us today. Sure. Thank you for having me again. Uh, my name is Abiel. I'm a product solutions architect at Cisco Thousand Eyes. And today, we're going to talk about Cloud Insights. Now, this is cloud, cloud Insights and Thousand Eyes? Yeah, so Cloud Insights is a new product in in you know the Thousand Eyes platform, and you know it's there to close that visibility gap. You know, going we're we're expanding the visibility that we used to have, and going deeper into the cloud to you know surface any issues and correlate uh, problems there to uh, reduce mean time to resolution, basically. Tell us a little bit more, Abdiel. I know so. I know we had agents in the different uh, cloud providers. The, is this how is that how is that different than than what we had before? Yeah, so this is not really about agents. Uh, it uh, that the cloud insights piece doesn't change any of that. Uh, as a matter of fact, it it, it uses it, but uh, you don't need agents in terms of that, the integrating with the cloud or anything like that. Um, it's more about the uh, correlations that you can do with the data that we have in the cloud. So, for example, remember the the path visualization view that we used to have, uh, you know, from the agent all the way to the application, mm -hmm. say a, an application or a workload that's deployed to the cloud, and that path visualization would give you up to the global accelerator. So, with Cloud Insights, we're giving you three things, um, two integrations, but three things basically. The first is we're expanding beyond the global accelerator. So what lies beyond, because for when you're troubleshooting, you know, you want to be able to see what's, what's after the global accelerator, because say that uh, everything's working as expected, your agent network or local network, your ISP, the internet, uh, the AWS network, but when you get up to the global accelerator, you know, what if the problem is in there and you don't know because we don't have that visibility. That's one of the problems that we are solving today. Uh, and, you know, besides the topology, we can correlate VPC flows to traffic an uh, anomalies with the traffic synthetics that we generate from our, t our tests. That's another use case. And the third one is about correlating configuration and oper operational changes in the AWS uh, cloud to problems that could be impacting your services and applications in the cloud. So that's that's really cool. It sounds like it's actually digging in um, to the parts. I mean, I, not sounds like it is digging into the parts we really couldn't see before. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and, you know, that can be a huge cause for user latency, user experience loss, um, those kinds of things. So um, really cool that, that you guys at Thousand Eyes came up with this um, kind of ingrained scenario into the, the cloud infrastructure. Yeah, for sure. Can you... For for our snackers, um, just tell us a little bit on how to get started with with all of this. Yeah, so we have two integrations. One of them is for inventory. So we create an inventory of your AWS resources. Uh, later uh, in next year, actually, we'll start supporting Azure and GCP later on. So we will have a single pane of glass uh, for all cloud resources across different cloud providers for all those of you in the audience who have a multi-cloud environment. Uh, but today, it's um, you build an inventory, you need an IAM role so that we can go and pull your resources. And the reason why we are pulling those resources, which are you know just described list permissions, is to notice when there was a configuration change and make that correlation to availability or performance of your application, your workload. The second integration is uh, for VPC flow logs. So you basically start sending VPC flow logs to an S3 bucket um, then subscribe to an SNS topic and give us an IAM role that can uh, get notifications uh, and uh, so that we can go ahead and pull that flow log and then show it on the on the on the cloud insights page. But I have a demo for you if you want to see it. I I'm actually ready yeah, to yeah, tell yeah. you a story. Please. Yeah. So this is new. This is launching uh, pretty soon. It's already public, so you can try it out if you want. Um, and this 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 is actually something that happened to a customer. So there was a customer that that was already using Thousand Eyes. You know that we have our synthetic tests uh, here. I'm showing uh, an HTTP, actually a page load test 
And I'm looking at the HTTP server layer. And if, if you notice in here, there was an availability drop to down to 33% at some point. So as, a, as an engineer that has been using Thousand Eyes for a while, one of the things that you would do is, you know, you would bring the network metrics to correlate, you know, any problems that could come from the network, say packet loss, latency, or jitter, that could be affecting that availability or response times, any other web metrics. But what, happen, what happens when you go in there and you don't see any affection in the network side, you know? And that's one of the limitations that we have in the cloud. Cloud obfuscation is a trend, you know, that makes it hard. It is easy to deploy things and get started, but then how do you ensure that those will meet the uh, requirements and, you know, um, for those responsible uh, of maintaining the cloud uh, environment, it, it, it becomes a, a, a hassle, it becomes really hard. So I, I could go down to the path visualization view and try to see if there's any end-to-end -end, uh, packet loss or forwarding loss, if there's a node that is uh, having some loss in there. But again, I don't see anything and the visibility is shortened because I only see up to the glow, et cetera. Error. But today with uh, Cloud Insights, um, let me go to the Cloud tab. And in here, notice this little uh, blue uh, change configuration, configuration change in here. As, as a matter of fact, uh, and actually, let me go to events and display the events. So here, there was a configuration change detected for uh, a resource in the, that's part of my inventory, right? So here's where the correlation begins. And if you see the element or the node, the resource that was changed um, is highlighted in the same color. And in this case, the low balancer has a change. So I can click on it and uh, config diff will open up. And here you can search for any red lines that will indicate that there was a removal or an addition. And in this case, I can quickly see that there was a security group that wasn't removed. If I drill down to it, I, I noticed that the uh, this security group was responsible for allowing communication from everywhere to uh, port 443. <laughs> you know, so the curl print of this Long story short, and this actually happened to a customer, is that um, someone removed the security group from the load balancer, hence you know hurting the uh, the the availability of the application. Uh, so uh, today, it's really important to have this uh, level of insight and correlation because uh, it's already hard to configure and and manage all these things. Uh, from the different teams, you have a networking team, you have a cloud ops team, you have an IT team, you have uh, an SR SRE team, and all of these guys are responsible for their own part of it. But what happens when there's a you know something that falls in the middle? Uh, you know here, you know instead of trying to troubleshoot this for hours, you can bring everyone on a call, show them the even evidence, and that's actually what happened with one of our customers. Uh, the networking team brought this up. The cloud ops teams was not aware of the change, but they saw the evidence and were able to fix it. That's it. So you just showed us this really interesting use case um, around um, the configuration change and the operational flows. Are there other use cases maybe around VPC flows that, that might tie into, um, you know, the networking within the, the cloud service that could potentially cause us some challenges? Yes, definitely. And for that, let me just quickly switch here. Abdiel, something that follow up question on this. As as you're talking and we have this new functionality in Thousand Eyes, how does this play with kind of full stack observability with Splunk when you add Splunk into the mix? I know there's an integration with Thousand Eyes pumping that data into Splunk Enterprise or Splunk Cloud. But then what what kind of data have have you seen the use case where you see all of that kind of top to down, top to bottom um, observability from like the application all the way down to what you're showing us here? Yeah, unfortunately today, Cloud Insights does not stream, you know, these type of correlations to uh, the Splunk integration or Autel for that matter. But I completely agree with you. You know, it makes sense to expand that use case 
because bottom line, you know, we we don't want to replicate thousand eyes in Splunk in terms of that, you know, set, just forwarding the metrics plainly. That's that's value, but ideally, we want to share correlations or events that are um, easier to to digest and you know to do some further correlation with whatever Splunk has available. So any other logs, any other syslog, any other metrics uh, and traces that Splunk is already collecting so that you can get a full picture of everything. All right, so I'm I'm here on a, on a different test and this is a page load test and here is how we can use VPC flow log correlation. So notice the, the spikes on page load time so if we select this time and try to dr drill down into one of these, and again, you know, the usual would be adding network metrics to correlate web to um, to network. And in, see, in here, we don't really see a correlation just, uh, you know, by, uh, by doing a very quick overview. But if we go down to the um, uh, cloud topology, there is... Uh, t the tab for traffic. And in here, we will notice that there's two uh, services or two uh, remote clients that are consuming most of the bandwidth for this uh, application or generating, I should say, more traffic than the rest. So what I can do is I can go in here and try to drill down in the uh, Cloud Insights bit to try to correlate uh, the, the source of uh, this, this spike in traffic. So let me go to view traffic in here, which takes me to a filtered view. And in here, you already noticed that there's uh, those outbound, inbound spikes. So which means that uh, from the usual traffic that we have, there's, uh, there are clients that are generating more traffic than usual. And in here, just from a quick view, you can see that the uh, remote uh, client is coming from Azure. So that's a piece of data that we have. But then we, we can change this to IP address. And you can narrow down this problem to one, uh, to a single IP address that's generating uh, the most traffic for, uh, and, you know, for this uh, application that you, what we are monitoring. And that's the correlation that we can create between VPC flow logs, which gives you the amount of data that is being generated or that uh, your application is receiving. And then down to the IP address of who is doing that. And this is the curve and this is the reason for those page load uh, response time spikes, because there are a couple of client IP addresses that are generating an uh, abnormal amount of traffic. Yeah, that's interesting because then we can take that and start to do even a little more research or make a dis you know, decision to quarantine or, you know, any number of mitigation steps can come from that. That's very clever. Exactly. Yeah, this is this is a pretty cool feature. Um, I, uh, I'm i probably going to play with it and there's uh, there's a lot we could do with this actually um, in, in our cloud instance that we run. I'll be honest, I didn't realize how many um, potential issues were not um, visible to us. I mean, I know we could potentially dig into the service provider itself, right? Um, but having that single pane of glass um, is really cool and being able to say, all right, everything looks fine, but something's funky. <laughs> but yet again, let's dig into the cloud service and really figure out what's going on. That's that's really cool. Abdiel, thank you so much for showing us this. And I definitely appreciate the what what Thousand Eyes are doing with, you know, looking at what the customer is requiring from us, from from Cisco and building these features. That that is uh that's huge actually. Yeah. I uh, that was my favorite sentence. This is a customer problem that we solved. Yeah, I love that too. Yeah, very cool. Abiel, thanks so much. Unfortunately that's all the time we have this week. You know, you're always welcome back to show us more cool things that, that we can do with Thousand Eyes. And uh Snackers, we'll catch you next week. Thank you all. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Snackers. Mm -hmm.